Okay. So those of us looking, looking at your paper programs may be slightly confused. I literally didn't realize until Saturday that I had mistitled the thing. I, my, I just glanced over it for months writing this thing. It's about cartograms. Now that we've got choropleth maps. So there you are. Uh, I'm going to dive right in because I got I timed this out at 14 minutes and 30 seconds, so I'm going to have to go fast. Um, last summer, summer of 2018, uh, National Geographic Partners uh, asked me to work on four of the thematic spreads for the 11th edition World Atlas, which is just out now. Um, these are what the spreads look like. Um, and as part of that, I did uh, three cartograms and a set of tree maps. And that's what I'm going to talk about here today. Um, I'm just going to run through them quickly. This is a cartogram of proven oil reserves. Uh, Cartogram of the world's millionaires, their distri distribution. This was a, this one actually is a choropleth map and a cartogram um, of uh, world um, energy consumption, uh, and the choropleth is percentage that's fossil fuel versus non fossil fuel use. Um, so I decided rather than redo one of those, I'd do this one. This is not one I did for the Atlas. Uh, this is the world population of chickens. Um, and I decided I'd do a new demo so I didn't have to redo screen captures, uh, redoing the same, same ones I did for NG. So uh, I'll just dive right in. First thing you do, you're making a cartogram using this technique. You get yourself your grid. Uh, you, you get the, the area of coverage you wanted to, to print at or to, to produce at. You decide what size block you're going to use, and you just create a grid of that. Uh, there are hex grids available out there. If you uh, look, look, look at gaming sites, if you want to use a hex, uh, hexagon size grid, these are squares. These are not lines and, and, and lines. These are individual blocks, and that's important to, uh, to have X separate individual blocks. Next thing you do is a map publisher. You lay in a graticule, and you put it in an equal area projection. I like Molvita. You can use Peters if you can stand it. Um, sinusoidal, uh, any equal area projection will do. Uh, just because I'm uh, worried about these things, I make sure that the projection covers the entire area of your page. I don't actually think you need to do this, but I worry about things going wrong if I don't. Um, and then uh, you take the grid and you move it into that projection, which of course is a no-no usually, but uh, you're using a bit of map publisher that is not just about projecting data. Then you uh, can find out what uh, the, you can use the tools, you can find out what the count is uh, in the area of, that you've picked, just how many bricks there are, uh, and you can use, you can make the area uh, visible. It uses whatever units Map Publisher does, it says it wants to use, uh, so you get it with a ridiculously long string of 15 billion odd uh, square meters, but you can use a calculation tool, create a field that says, uh, that makes it into the size of a block because all the blocks, of course, are the same size because it's an equal area projection. Then you go your data, uh, noting to be sure that you got the units right. Uh, one of the important things for a cartogram is uh, that you want your units to be a relatively, e one block equals a relatively even number. So that's what this is about. There's the total, the total number of chickens you're going to be putting on this map. Um, so. You do a little math. Um, rule of thumb, your typical world equal area map is going to be about one-third, well, 29 percent land. You want the map to be kind of in the same ballpark. Um, if you want it to be really tight in with very little water, um, a half. If you want it to be uh, more loose, a quarter. I like a third as a, as a number. So that's the target that I'm looking for is to have Five, 50, 53, 58 blocks would be my ideal number. Divide it out, it'll tell you what the number of chickens per, per block is, and then basically adjust back and say, well, I actually want it a little bit looser than that. So in this case, I made the blocks a little bit, uh, I made them eight point rather than seven point. Uh, and so that's, uh, that gets you a number that is closer to what I was looking for as a total block count. And then you can use that number, you can use the, the, uh, the, divi the, the divisor number to tell you uh, rounding, this is a, 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 a rounded number, uh, 
divide the total actual by the number per block, and there you are. Go back and enlarge the blocks. You can uh, get the new number into the calculation field. Uh, now you'll be using, you won't necessarily be using that calculation field directly, but you will be using it. Next thing you do, this is even more counterintuitive for those of you using projection software, bring in a, uh, a, a nice country or whatever political unit you're using, whatever unit you're using base, make it in, um, put it into Mercator. Uh, the reason you do that is because you want the final shapes on your maps to be conformal. You want people to recognize, say, oh, that's China, that's France, that's whatever. That's what conformal projections do. So take advantage of it. Take that Mercator projection, take it out of being projected, and then stick it back in to the Molvida. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, this is how this works. So now, for each of those objects, each of those objects in the, uh, the Mercator projection thing, you can apply that uh, calculation to tell you just how big that object is in your new block unit. Uh, put that calculation in there, it'll tell you how many blocks it actually is. You can also create a, uh, a field then that is uh, what you want it to be, that's a, a user enter sort of thing, and a calculation field that says, well, how much do you want to multiply that by in order to get it to be the size you want it to be in blocks. So there's the first one, the biggest, biggest pop chicken population is China. Uh, and you blow it up uh, by the amount that it says, and that actually doesn't work because it's, uh, you need to use a square root. So that's why the square root function is uh, make sure that your areas and aerial enlargement versus linear enlargement are straight, or you'll get very confused. So you enter it, you, and then you use the enlargement tool, the, uh, the scale tool, blow it up by that amount, and you've got China the right size. You run into some interesting difficulties. Uh, I call this one the Alaska problem. Run into every time you make a map that has the US on it. Uh, this is an illustration. You can reduce Alaska however you want. Um, so make it so it's roughly the proportion you'll want the, uh, the bits to be. Um, countries that are largely island, you're going to want to remove a whole lot of those islands to make a series of blocks. Uh, so that's something I'll be getting to in a little bit. And then you just start doing that over and over and over again. This is with 20 countries, this is with 40 countries, this is with 60 countries, this is with 80 countries, and you won't notice a whole lot of difference between that and 102 countries, because once you start getting down to the countries that are only four block size, they really kind of disappear. Um, you'll notice that Indonesia is just out of hand there, so I'll have to figure out something to do with that. So I just simplified, reduced, and then you can use that, you still use that calculation field up at the top, to figure out exactly what the size is, make sure it is the right size. Straighten out Japan so it fits in the corner. Take the, uh, the countries from uh, Vietnam to Iran and make sure they all have enough space. Uh, realize that Bangladesh isn't really gonna fit as it is, so you know you're gonna squish it one way or the other, and that's fine, you just put it in there. There are a whole lot of countries left over. What I like to do uh, where it's appropriate is to uh, make sure that all the leftovers, make, make sure that the total blocks on the map add up to the total blocks, more or less, that, that are in the, in the data set. That means taking them uh, and just group them geographically, just sort them out and put a, put a field in there, sort them out. Um, I found that for this set, I ended up actually just using uh, the whole number, the ones that actually held num whole numbers rather than ones that were zero. They mostly added up to the, the clumps um, in question. And just put that in reserve for a minute while you're working on this. And so here you are. Here you have, I've moved things around so it was more or less how I think I wanted the things to be arranged. It won't be how it's finally arranged. Uh, you have a code that, uh, in, your, in your field that says how many blocks you want to be, so label it. That'll make your life easier. Then you, turn, you lock down the, uh, the country template code and you unlock the block code and you just run the select button around until you select as many, you're always gonna select more buttons and more uh, blocks than you think. So usually it's a matter of selecting and then deselecting so you get down to the right number. You get the right number, group. Group this now. <laughs> 
because inevitably somewhere along, in fact, group it even earlier, because inevitably some long, somewhere along the way you're going to double click and it'll go into isolation mode and we've lost your selection, you've got to start over again. Style it, um, delete, I like deleting the, the background so I can see what I haven't covered yet, what I've got to fit to next, and just keep going. Uh, this is the sort of placeholder colors. And you'll notice as I go that I'm making some adjustments as I go to try to make things work. I wanted to make sure, for example, that uh, Malaysia and Indonesia fit together. That's a geometry that's always tricky, or was tricky here anyway. Um, turn and rotate things so they fit. There I decided I was giving up and trying to get Russia to connect to China also. Um, building Europe. Russia just ends up being appendage to Europe rather than connecting all the way. Russia, is, Russia always has this problem. These are for most, most data. Places with lots of little countries tend to compress uh, from what you've set up because they fit together more like a puzzle piece. Um, and at this point I realized I had neglected to put in the data for Dominican Republic and Algeria. So there, Dominican Republic has a lot of chickens. And that's the final uh, graphic layout, throw a color brewer uh, palette on there, put some labels on, and boom, you've got a, card, you've got a, a cardigram. Um, pretty straightforward. There you are. If, if you want this map, there you are. Um, this map uh, was the second one, the second product that I delivered on, for the energy spread. This is the first one, and the technique for this one uses something, basically a similar idea, um, created a series of graphs uh, using Excel, uh, just cut and paste those Excel graphs into, uh, into Illustrator, scaled uh, the total for the largest year using the same technique, and uh, you can create a, any sort of cartogram uh, that you need. Tree maps, I only have, have like two, two minutes left, Something like that? Three, all right. I got luxury. Um, so uh, tree maps are an interesting thing to try to create using data. Uh, you could, there is an automatic tool in uh, Microsoft Office. I don't like it because it doesn't give you a whole lot of control of what's grouped in what order. Um, the process is pretty straightforward. You have a, uh, you, you know what the size of your tree map is, uh, your, your overall area and your total overall shape. You do the same thing. In this case, I actually ended up using a, a, um, a geographic WGS projection, and degrees are the unit, and the projection actually ended up being one pica square equals one degree. So there's a neat little, little thing. Um, and so then you just basically take your, your, your data, and the trick here is to group your data in the way that you want it to, uh, to, to, to lay out in order. So uh, you get weird totals, subtotals of all of X and Y, but not Z. And as long as you plan out what the order of it is, it's basically just a matter of, uh, in this case, for example, first build the all of grain total rectangle, and you use that from building a rectangle century from the bottom of the box up until it's exactly the right size. Then you build, uh, and then you build the rice, and then the wheat, and then the, and you basically build it in order. Um, one thing I didn't do here that I highly recommend is use a whole lot more, uh, um, what do you call it when you have decimals at the end of it? Uh, a whole, whole lot less rounding uh, because errors do add up very quickly in these. Um, and yeah, again, you basically just build, uh, in this case you build the, the, the grain first, then you build all the purple and green and blue as the next block, then you build the green, then you build the vegetable oils, then the sugars, and so forth and just add them up, and they will, if you've done the data in the spreadsheet correctly, they will come out correctly. And that is all I have. <laughs>